today is December the 10th, 2015. This is the Northampton Council on Aging Board of Directors and Northampton Senior Services. Our first is the public session. I see no members of the public, so we'll go directly to the minutes from the November 12th meeting. Uh, does anybody want to uh, approve the minutes? I do. A motion? Second. Second. Okay. Ah, any questions, uh, corrections, problems with it? Pardon? Oh, Barbara. Oh, Barbara. Barbara approved. We have to pick a second. Second and third. <laughs> okay, uh, there's no questions, no uh, additions on that. Uh, can we have a vote. All those in favor of uh, approving them? And anyone opposed? None opposed. It passes. So, let's go to finances and the. Oh, we're, we're skipping the staff report this time. And Michelle is not here. So, we're uh, going right to the finances, FYI 16 budget. Ah, yes. And before we do that, we're going to have a moment of silence for a former board member, Donnie Newman, who passed away recently. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. So we can just have a moment of silence for her. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, I, I brought in the uh, program that was at Dottie's um, uh, service, so uh, I'll pass it around. You can see it. It was at Ahern's on um, the last Saturday. So, uh, so I think everybody here probably knew Dottie, who mm -hmm. she was on our board for like 17 years. She was on the Elder Vision Inc. Friends Group. Mm -hmm. She was a real participant and as a volunteer and. Um, you know, she was instrumental with the senior center getting built, um, and she always should be recognized for getting the bathrooms for men and women close to the great room because she said seniors don't want to walk across the lobby to have to use the facility. So we wouldn't have those if it wasn't for Dottie's tenacity. So. Very good. Okay, now we can go to the finances, uh, FY16. So um, I passed out the ON and PS, um, and we have funds in both of those. So again, this is our budget for FY16, and um, to be expended by the end of this fiscal year, which would be um, was he in June 30th. Yeah. What was he at? What was he at? Well, the anybody, anybody has questions? No, nothing unusual from last month, I assume. No sudden drop of, drop of money in or something like that. No. Okay, we can. Uh, any questions on the uh, budget as it occurs? Mm -hmm. How about FY17 budget? Yes, uh, we had a department head meeting um, the end of November, and so I asked a question about what you know what's coming up with the budget and. That isn't being, um, we aren't getting that as a, a responsibility yet in terms of coming up with what our budget will be. Um, the mayor um, and finance director will work on what what direction we need to go after that budget. So I will let you all know as soon as I know, and then we'll figure out what we're going to have to do. Okay. Question, then? No. Oh. Okay, I thought you had a question. Uh, the director's report. Yep. Um, I passed out an annual report. Um, this is what I provided to the mayor, and I will be sending a copy to all the city councilors. And it's a snapshot of who we were as Northampton Senior Services and Senior Center for uh, FY15. And in reading through it, you'll just see a lot of um, statistics of the number of people who use the building or how many people are, are participants in a particular program like the 
um, farmer market or whatever. And then attached to this is going through everything that we provided for programs, uh, services, opportunities. Um, it's page after page of what we offer here for FY15. Um, and I'm sure we have omitted a few things, but um, it just gives a clear picture of what this building does get used for and um, the people who, who come in. So you can read that at your convenience. And if you have any questions, you can either call me or we can discuss it at the next meeting, whatever your choice is. We have quite a few programs available. Great. You know, is there any way we can get this in the Gazette? I mean, you talk about a marketing piece. Yeah. Here's what we do. How come you're not doing it? Um, we could probably talk to um, a reporter and see, and perhaps they can come over, and, and maybe that can get tied into uh, our January, is it going to be January, where we do a highlight for the whole year, a lot of pictures, and what's so that would be in February. So maybe we can tie it into that. Mm -hmm. um, it would be interesting just thinking about in terms of marketing publicity. Uh, Hampshire Life has that two page uh, something. Oh, right, community. yeah. That yeah. would be great to do something. Yeah, maybe we could do that sooner than later. Yeah, we do it. that would be yeah. great because there's different people and different activities. Absolutely. From all over. Yeah, good, good suggestion. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, to really uh, point out something. Yeah, what what, what I happens here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think the uh, staff works very hard here. I think the volunteers work very hard here and there's just a lot of effort and energy and enthusiasm that's put into um, trying to provide and feel, fill those unmet needs that we have for seniors in North Kingston. I'm proud to be associated with you all. So thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, November 14th, we held our ninth annual holiday craft festival and marketplace. Um, it was a great day. It was very, very successful. And um, it's the most money that we've raised with one of our festivals. Each year, we kind of change it around a little. We add, we take away um, pretty much the whole senior center is like a mecca for shoppers. Um, so it takes a lot of volunteers, a lot of staff involvement, um, a lot of donations. Um, you know, there's there's just a lot to be done for it, and then the day is, is pretty festive, and it works out good when the weather cooperates, meaning it's not too warm outside, that it's not snowing, that it's just got that chill to make you feel like, oh, the holidays are here. Um, so uh, at that event, we made $3,528.82. So we're pretty pleased with that. And I just want to give special thanks to Bob and Kathy Kais, who came down from the North Pole to uh, be Mr. and Mrs. Claus. We also had um, some of the, the uh, ballerinas or the participants in the Nutcracker who were here putting out their um, little bookmarks to talk about the Nutcracker, which is happening this weekend, in case you didn't know that. And then also to Barbara and John Kaczynski, who did all of the food for um, the bistro, um, which you know takes a lot of extra energy, and also uh, what we did for the, the um, coffee shop. But, you know, and then I can say Mary helped for like one whole day. All we did was mark all of the donations that we got from Cedar Chest um, that we um, sell. Barbara, who did the um, Florence Savings Bank ballots, um, I think we got 68 or 69 that day. Have you which, all signed up? <laughs> you wouldn't have. dare not. Now, if you're a Florence Savings Bank customer, we have the forms out at the front. And it ends as of December 31st, so uh, we would love to be winners again. I know. Uh, whoever does. Yeah, they only kind of say once. So I, I do thank all the volunteers, everybody who helped with this um, craft festival. I haven't seen it this year. Again, a lot of people in the building, and it was just a lot of fun, a lot of work. Um, so. I would like to go on record right there and say, if you do volunteer to come help, if you can't do it, please tell everybody the day before. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you know, that was pretty tough um, that day. Right. Oh, you know, I apologize, Jim. Yeah, Jim was here doing, uh, we, we go to each of the vendors to get a list, a, a menu. They can fill out a menu and then the food's delivered. So thank you uh, for that, Jim, because Jim But was, it's just, it was tough that we were, there was supposed to be five of us and only yeah. two yeah. showed up. Wow. And that, that makes it hard, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we do rely on our volunteers. We were Bob was doing it as well. So I apologize for anybody on the, at the table that I didn't. Oh, that, that's not a problem. I just want to say that whoever did the bacon, it was wonderful. We had so much baked goods. Yes, you yeah. did the baked table. Yeah. yeah, it was. Yes, it was good. There um, is a call out. Um, Crystal puts a call out on our our um, email list or a, a robo call to get people to know about a particular program or baked goods, and so it's a good reminder for people. Next so. year, Susie will have something. So we look forward to, to whatever people would like to donate to us. So thank you everybody for helping um, in whatever capacity, because all of it makes a difference in what we're trying to accomplish. Um, December 18th, we had a food service training here for those folks who work in the coffee shop um, or do a lot of the food preparation for us. And we had Meredith O'Leary, uh, the Director for Public Health here, uh, to conduct the training uh, and I, I thought it went really well because you know um, as staff we're three of us are surf safe trained so we can say things but it really comes more official when it's from um, somebody from for example the Board of Health so um, on the 18th that evening I had a potluck for the LGBT community we're trying to do one event a month for the LGBT community and that happened to be the potluck we did a games night and then we also had three informational meetings since July so um, in January I don't have the schedule set up yet but there will be one event for the LGBT community and um, Jean Savarese has contributed a lot of books um, in the library that are specific to the LGBT community so we thank her for that um, Tuesday night, Mary uh, Listowski was here with me. We had a wonderful group of Daisy and Brownies here. It's a troop. It's um, part of Girl Scouts. It's a troop from Holyoke. Um, so the, the girls came and the parents and obviously the, the group, the troop leaders, and um, decorated the tree in the lobby. They made the decorations, and then they also put the decorations up in. It was a really wonderful group of uh, parents and kids doing doing all of that. And well, the kids was, were great. They, you know, today you get kids and they're running here and there and climbing and doing. They were wonderful. They really were. And they loved it. I mean, they were so excited about it. They're trying to reach the top of the tree. Yeah. Uh, it was great. They were really nice. That's nice. Yes. So and ages. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. They're brownies, so they're oh. young. Brownies they're and fairly. daisies are younger. And daisies are younger. Yeah. So I don't know what so the real look is. I've never heard of the yeah, daisies. They're, yeah, and if you look on the tree, there's two pictures that we um, put on the tree of the event happening. There'll also be some pictures in our next Con Street Chronicle. And there also was a, a, a reporter here um, who took a bunch of pictures. So I don't know when that would be in, but I would imagine it might be on the senior page. Mm -hmm. And I think we should give, uh, I don't know, something to deals and sales. Uh, yeah, Deals and Steals um, sponsors that brownie troop, and again, they're from Holyoke, and they, you know, uh, Ivy had called and asked if they could do this for us, and it's like, yeah, of course, um, we would love it. And, you know, Bob put the tree up for us, because uh, it wasn't up yet, so, um, and Deals and Steals is the one who provides um, whatever that troop needs. They're the sponsor of that, that troop, so it was very nice. And, you know, they, I guess, didn't have a location in Holyoke to do this, so they called here. And we already have a connection with Deals and Steals yeah. with the program that Crystal set up um, for out, nutritional outreach. So, and um, the owner uh, was here as well that oh, night. Now, the brownies are pretty much equivalent to a Cub Scout. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. We're about the same age as the Cub Scout. Yeah. Yeah. Daisy's much younger. Yeah. Named after the uh, originator of the Girl Scouts. I think it was her name was Daisy Cox. Yeah. Oh. Absolutely. And I only know that because I looked up to see <laughs> <laughs> how you really spell the Daisy. How smart you are. So anyway, that's what I know. <laughs> wow. yeah, it, it, it was just really a very nice event, and yeah. um, you know I'm sure we can have a connection year round with um, the troop. Yeah, they the, would the, like to do other things with seniors. The brownies actually are the ones that pack the nutritional outreach boxes for our nutritional outreach. They, they do that as a community service oh. twice a month. Well, wow. Wow. That's, wow. that's great to know. Yeah. Yeah. The ones you uh, connected okay. through deals with seals. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And they're brownies from Holyoke. They're brownies from Holyoke. Oh. Wow. Yeah. And we yeah. can get our own brownies. <laughs> well, Ivy is the manager at Deals and Steals, and she's the brownie troop leader. Okay. So, okay. All right. yeah. so that's so the connection. Yeah. And already mentioned, if you um, are a Florence Savings Bank member, um, customer, if you have to fill out a form uh, to vote for us, please do. Um, Barbara will be here Saturday, um, Sunday, excuse me, at the dinner to get people to um, sign up for that. No one gets in the room without doing it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you but know that's uh, true. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, just a little snare on the on the, yeah. on, the on the floor. Just fold it on your toe if you don't <laughs> do anything. Yes. Um, that's that's what I have right now. Um, yeah. There's a few other specifics under new business that I'll, I'll cover. Any questions on uh, the report? Comments? Okay, let's go on to building and grounds. Yep. Um, so the city council um, did the second reading, and we are able to use gift um, account monies to purchase a sign to put out front. Mm -hmm. And then we have other funds that we'll use to put a, a smaller sign on the building in the back that says Northampton Senior Center or Northampton Senior Services and Senior Center. So um, I have a meeting next week with the, a sign maker. So I'll get a couple different estimates and you know what kind of signs could be put out there so that people will know. So that was um, that, that's going to happen on the property. You're going to get a group together or uh, to design a sign or just go from the sign maker. Um, I think probably looking at a bunch of different kind of signs. I mean, I kind of have an idea that sign that's up at Northampton High School. Um, I don't know if you've seen yeah, it. It's yeah, electronic. Yeah. And that you can nice, add yeah. different messages yeah. to it. I yeah. have no idea how much those cost. <coughs> but um, I think as we work with it, um, yeah. if anybody has ideas, so, you know, certainly get them my way. And, um, you know, we want something that's visible and easy to read, no serifs, just the kind right. of high face, yeah. things that. And something that can be reprogrammed uh, quickly to yeah. keep you up to date. Right. Whereas some things will be permanent, of course, but most things will be changing. Right. Yeah, that's good. And then we don't have to keep going out there in all types of weather to put our sandwich sign out. Yeah. yeah. Our sign. But if that's what we have to do. That's what we do. Um, oh, uh, and then I just wanted to remind everyone that um, the senior center is one of the locations for first night activities. So even though the city departments close at noontime, the senior center is still open. Um, I think the last performance is later in the day, maybe 6.30 or so. So the building's open the whole time for people to come in for the performances. Um, anybody who might be interested in what is happening for first night, we do have uh, the, their uh, flyers out on the table. So you can grab one of those. Um, so. Um, we'll have a building monitor, monitor, and there's also a custodian in the building um, for that night because it does really, you know, people come in for the, the programs for first night. Um, we're having a little problem with the lights in the alco in the um, cupola. They keep going off. The, if you look up in there, there's hanging lights which we don't use at all because they don't work. <laughs> the light bulbs keep burning out so we don't even oh my God. put it on because it's, it's just so consistent. They don't amount to anything anyway. Yeah, it's real, that's really just for ambiance. Um, 
And then the other things that are there, we call them uh, um, toilet paper rolls. Because that's what they look like, uh, the holders. Uh, and they used to face up, but now um, the electrician moved them facing down for us for the light. So we're pretty satisfied with that. But for some reason, um, the circuit keeps getting tripped so we'll have that checked out because it does make a difference roof. when it's dark out <laughs> oh, and those yeah. lights aren't working so yeah so the one the, the other ones are working okay for us it was pretty bright to start with but it, it really works well having those on now but those are really um, lighting not for visual lighting it's for um, the ambiance of the the, the the looks the looks of it the well, aesthetics so there's some, of some, it. some light to the center of the room where yeah. you do have it in the daytime from the uh, windows up yeah. above and um, so now there's going to be and I've already mentioned this I know um, in the winter when we need to have the parking lot plowed there's going to be a private contractor coming in to plow we don't need to rely on different departments to do either the sanding or removing the big piles of snow or the snow plowing um, or sanding. So we have a contractor who is going to be doing some of the other lots. And so now we're sort of on the, we aren't, before it was um, through the fire department and they had to do what they needed to do for safety um, personnel. So now we have something, so that was good. The mayor worked on getting that so that our parking lot is done probably earlier in the morning than usual. So I think that's, a, that's great. Uh, and Bob has been really getting things ready for the winter uh, so that we are prepared with our sidewalks and uh, parking lots. <laughs> Will the new contractor be able to haul some snow away also? Um, I, I don't know that other than that that person plows. Okay. I, don't, I don't know the other parts of it. Yeah. Um, but I will find out so that we can have snow piles because we had a lot of snow in the parking lot and lost a lot of parking space yep. last year. Not only that, they didn't really sand. Remember when I fell and I came yes, from a meeting or something? Twice I came and, the, and there was ice out in the, in the parking lot. And those Second time around, there was no sand. You said they were coming, you know. I told you that there was no sand. Yeah. So what we can do, you know, if somebody comes in and says, oh, there's, you know, it's slippery out there, then we have to call other departments to come do it. So uh, I don't think anybody's really trying to ignore us down here at the senior center, but, you know, we're probably a list of one of on a number of people on the list. So uh, I know it doesn't make it any safer for you to get out of your car if there's no sand, but, you know, some things happen when they happen. You need a car cane. Oh, yes, I said that. Um, well, no, but I can't. Like, like, exactly. It still wasn't in the sand where I parked. It was ice. And then there was no other place to um, park. So I got out. So, also, I'll just remind um, everybody that if the senior center is closed, you would know that on the um, three TV stations, channel 40, 22, and channel 3. And it's also put on the radio. Um, what I try to do is I get down here, I see what everything is like in terms of um, safety, the you know, it's the snow there, is the the, Bob been able to do what he has to do um, so that we aren't encouraging people to come out in really, really bad um, weather to get down here. Um, and then I put a message on the machine uh, by 7.30, it will say all programs at the Senior Center are canceled, or programs are going to start at 10 o'clock, whatever the message is. Um, now, that all changes a little bit when the mayor closes the city down, because it means no departments are open. Um, and I would still put a message on the machine saying that the Senior Center is closed. But when we're closed, the city's open, but we close. Um, we are still in the building. Staff is still here um, because only the mayor can declare the city closed and that means staff don't come in. But if, if I close the senior center down because of whatever's happening out there in um, the environment, then um, 
staff is still here. What happens also is that, you know, when the weather's bad, all the instructors call and cancel and they don't come in. But we are open, so if somebody comes in and wants to buy PVTA tickets, they can. The fitness center is open. If somebody wants to use the um, computer room, they can. The doors are unlocked, but it's really, um, everything else isn't happening because the instructors choose not to come in. So it's basically closed for safety purposes, but not closed completely. Right. Recommended right. you don't take chances. Right, we are encouraging people to get out there. And that will also be in our next Con Street Chronicle. And that's what I have for buildings and ground. Any questions, comments? Okay, let's go on to old business. We're updating the Kick the Tires. Yeah. Well, wonderful news about Kick the Tires. This campaign's been going on for Long time. a little more than a year. Doesn't seem that long, but it has been that long. Um, and on Wednesday, um, we had a couple who came in and paid the balance of trying to raise the $65,000. That's great. So the balance was $2,297.05. So a check was written, and so now we have the full funding for the van. And I guess it's, it, you know, David and Arlene came in, and, and that's that ended our pursuit of our kick the tires campaign so I say thank you to them I say thank you to everyone who contributed for this uh, vehicle um, and now it's time that we can um, get out there and buy one to to buy two vans two. so um, yeah so I think this is wonderful and well, fortunately we have a little bit of extra time now because we don't use the vans in the winter because of safety purposes of getting seniors on and off in the snow. So we really won't need the vans until maybe March or late February. So it gives a little bit of time to Yeah, yeah and it, it isn't like you walk onto a parking, uh, to a car, um, car dealership and say, I want that van with that lift. The lifts are something that you have, actually have to have retrofitted to the bus. Really, that's what we should be calling these buses. Yeah. Um, so uh, it, it might take a couple of months, but at least we know we're going to have them. And one of the thoughts that I had was when the buses are ready to come, that we have this huge, huge, like grand, I don't know grand opening isn't the right word, but um, to have something. Champagne. You know, yeah. 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 So to really accentuate that we have two hands now for transportation. No, you're going to toast it. So. Don't get the car or don't so, get the new bus with this campaign. I, I thank everyone who contributed anything from a couple dollars to twenty thousand dollars to two thousand whatever people contributed it all made the difference yeah that razu can flash yeah the crystal the um, did that with the valley Today. notes and then also this year you might just want to mention what they did this year um we did giving tuesday which took place in, on december 1st and we raised five hundred and thirteen dollars and fifty one cents on Giving Tuesday, so that was yeah. good. So that was all online. Yeah, that was done. Yeah, was it cool? And, was it and so, if any other donations come in, that will just go into the transportation fund, so that it will be for the not nothing, not for the van purchase. You know, unless you know we find out now vans are sixty-seven thousand. Mm -hmm. um, so that money will just go into transportation if somebody sends in money for the kick the tires. We will need something because in the spring when you get the vans and things are operating, you're planning to organize some kind of transportation system. Yes, yeah, we need, we're going to need drivers. Um, we need drivers coordinating. Dispatcher. Dispatching all yeah, those sort of things. Yeah, because you know, the, the whole idea is that those vans are going all day long. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what we want to do. Okay, uh, update the benefits and the counseling program. Yeah. So um, Cynthia Terrell is no longer the manager for that program. She's um, not running that program. And so I'm gonna have Crystal just talk about the, um, 
the what's happening in that program and who's getting served and the um, importance of the program. The benefit counseling and application assistance program has we were awarded the grant from MCOA, Massachusetts Council on Aging, in January of 2015. We were awarded $30,000. Um, it's a three-year grant, $30,000 a year, so a total of $90,000. Um, we have, we currently have 15 volunteers that are trained to provide benefit counseling. They are currently providing benefit counseling here at the Northampton Senior Center on Mondays and Thursdays. Um, we're working on memorandums of understandings with senior centers within the Highland Valley service area to have benefit counseling volunteers placed at other senior centers with in the community. Um, Was that the cri uh, criteria of the grant? Do that. The grant, the criteria of the grant was that we worked within a regional mm -hmm. um, location. So we picked the Highland Valley yeah. Elder Services service area because it's a need within that service area for the benefit counseling. Mm -hmm. um, we are we've currently helped about 40 individuals, not counting the last two months. So up until. November, we have we have provided 40 individuals within the Highland Valley service area with benefit counseling. We've taken in over 300 phone calls for information and referral for individuals that are seeking public benefits or additional services to help them um, financially. This is only for seniors. It's for seniors 60 years and older, yeah, who live in the Highland Valley service area, area. Okay. and. Um, we have our senior aide, Linda, has been the intake person for the program. The program wasn't additionally um, set up because it's a pilot program with an intake procedure. Um, the, the other agency that was awarded the grant was Elder Services of Berkshire County, and they have an intake and referral department. As a Council on Aging and Senior Center, we do not have an intake and referral department. So the benefits manager, who at the time was Cynthia, was not only recruiting, training, and learning about the benefits programs herself and recruiting and training volunteers, she also was the intake and referral person for the benefit counseling. So when, because this is a pilot program, when we discovered that having a 19.5 hour a week position and having to do intake referral, recruitment, training um, was a lot for 19.5 hours a week. Um, we trained Linda to do the intake portion. So when phone calls come in for the benefit counseling program, Linda, the senior aide, gets those phone calls. She fills out the intake sheet as well as refers anybody who's not appropriate for benefit counseling to another organization. So if they're calling because they need help filling out their mass health application, they're referred to Shine. Mm -hmm. If they're calling and they're a Northampton senior and they want to talk about, you know, how they can get a care plan so that they can remain at home, they would be referred to Michelle. Um, so that's now that we have Linda doing the intakes for the program, uh, it's been going a lot easier. Um, we can focus on training the volunteers and now that the volunteers are providing counseling for fuel assistance, um, SNAP benefits, which is formerly food stamps, as well as some program, other programs within the community like the Verizon Lifeline Telephone Program, the discount, and they also do the um, Safe Like Wireless phone applications and brown bag applications. So. So in terms of the intake and eligibility, because um, if the elder services of Berkshire County, they, just like Highland Valley, they have an intake and eligibility mm -hmm. you know, department. So wouldn't could that be something in terms of, the, I know you've already taken care of it, but, but was that ever explored with Highland Valley since you know you are kind of like you know cooperating or collaborating with Highland Valley? Because they do already have an intake and eligibility. I'm just yeah, we had, um, I met with Nancy mm -hmm. at Highland Valley. Okay. I did a um, in-service for their case management. Okay. Um, so their intake and referral 
department currently gives out our telephone number. Oh, okay. So um, that's what they're currently doing as part of a collaboration. They're making referrals to the program. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure because we're interagency, mm -hmm. we're not really connected, so I'm not sure how a permission to share would work if somebody's okay. calling one agency, mm -hmm. providing them with confidential information for mm -hmm. that in agency to then okay. refer the, that confidential information to okay. another agency to actually do the work. So I, I would definitely, I mean, I would be open to discussing it um, with Highland Valley just to see what we could do, but I'm not sure how that would work for yeah, confidential reasons. And, and I think, you know, at this point, you're already kind of um, corrected or solved the issue. So. Yeah. Well, and also with the grant, um, what MCOA is looking for is to put this out to councils on aging to participate in, mm -hmm. um, serving a different but similar um, need than what the um, AAAs are doing. Okay. Um, and yeah, it was a competitive grant. And yeah, we, you know, Crystal wrote the grant and we were awarded that. So I we were pretty happy with that. Um, but there's, there is a lot of involvement with it. One of the things at the very beginning was to make sure, because even though some people feel like there's no help out there for them, there really are a lot of agencies and organizations. And the concern that we had was that they weren't going to Highland Valley and then coming to us and then talking to um, community action mm -hmm. like who who are you who have you talked to already right. so that people weren't duplicating the service mm -hmm. right um, but it is amazing the kind of um, interactions that come across either with people coming into the building for this or over the phone it can be anywhere the needs of people with having their car repaired so they can get out um, getting food uh, it, it just is immense what people are out there needing um, or needing information about. So, and it isn't, you know, sometimes, you know, it could be a 10 minute phone call, but then a, a, an interview, um, an intake could be, you know, two, two hours, right. depending right. upon what the need is. So, yeah. so it's, it's a very intense program, I right. think, for um, a Council on Aging Senior Services, mm -hmm. but I think it's, it's really doable. Um, and it really serves a, a large population, even even as a regional program. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Patty actually met with the mayor to talk about the program and um, to try to get the the program increased in hours so that whoever the regional manager is um, can work more than 19.5 hours. So Patty and I worked with MCOA to kind of. Um, reallocate funding within the grant and then we requested additional funding so that we could increase the hours because um, anything over 19.5 hours for a city position has benefits so then we had to work in the benefit aspect of um, the salary salaried staff person as well so this is something that's currently we're working towards to be able to have somebody that's at night more than 19.5 hours so that we can keep the program going and Right, so in the end, it really is, it's meeting unmet needs for sure out there. And the program is, tra Patty mentioned unmet needs, that's one thing that the program is tracking. So we have volunteers who are trained to do specific applications, but if there's needs that there's no applications to meet, there's no programs, there's no funding in order to meet the needs that people are calling with, we're tracking those unmet needs mm -hmm. to be able to report them to the state, to let okay. them know, you know, we had, 50 people in Northampton that called requesting roof repairs or repairs to a second unit within their home that they could be utilizing for rental income, but they can't because there needs to be a repair and there's no money. Okay. So those things were tracking oh, okay. the unmet needs. Oh, okay. well. And the kinds, that's right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's a really What are you doing your spare time? <laughs> no. I would love some spare time you got. I need to get converted. <laughs> what, what kind of spare time? How much income? <laughs> 
Um, it's based on, we, we'll help anybody at any income, but based on what applications you may qualify for based on what income you have. So there's income, different income requirements um, based on what application you're looking for. And it's so complicated, any of that stuff, I mean, and it changes a lot, so yeah. having current and up-to-date information is key. Do they do driveways? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, is that uh, I'll cover the benefits counseling program? Yes. Any other questions or want to ask Crystal? Okay, let's move on to the 2016 Senior Veteran Tax Workoff Program. Yes. So this is the third year that the mayors have this program, um, and it allows seniors and veterans of Northampton who own property to be able to work um, in a capacity in one of the city departments or schools. Um, this year it's for 108 hours and there's a thousand dollars reduction on uh, property tax. Um, the deadline for veterans or seniors to apply is December 18th and applications um, are online or they can be picked up here at the Senior Center or at the Assessor's Office at 210 Main Street which is City Hall um, and also Veteran Services at 240 Main Street. Memorial Hall building. Uh, currently, um, thus far, we've had 10 seniors who have applied and two veterans, and I've had conversations with a number of people. So hopefully we can fill the 20 slots we have for seniors and the 10 for veterans. Um, but uh, the guidelines have changed a little bit, which I think opens up uh, more eligible people um, who are seniors or veterans. And a senior is 60 or older, that's who that would um, cover. So uh, it, it's been a great program for two years. I think a lot of departments, including us, have benefited from having um, somebody coming in from this program. And you know, I've just heard good stories from other departments um, who have had people in their departments doing a variety of jobs. So. Okay, any questions on that? No, let's move on to the handyman position. So that job, um, handyman position was posted. That's the job that Bill Hubbard had. Um, he left in September, he retired. Um, so that job has been posted in at this particular time. I do not know how many people have applied yet. Um, I don't we have people who have applied who one are the um, handyman and here's all the skills that you need for that. And then also it's the um, primary van driver who really maintains our vehicles. So um, somebody needs to have multi-skills. Mm -hmm. so. How many hours a week is that? Um, it's, it can be up to 19. Mm -hmm. No pennies. <laughs> yeah, the handyman program itself has really, in terms of people calling and wanting jobs done, has really declined. But um, there could be a variety of reasons for that. So mm -hmm. we're really trying to get that out there. I mean, for paying $20 an hour for our handyman, and it could, you know, a handyman can be a woman or a man. So if it turns out to be a woman, <laughs> it'll change the handy person. Handy person. Um, you know, and, and paying somebody else who comes to your house who does, you know, handy person services you know it can be $75 an hour so um. we had a woman come to the front desk today who had been told that we have somebody who can put a number sign on our house she thought for five dollars oh that's the triad sign. Yeah, that's through us we do right. the triad doesn't exist for Northampton anymore so we have, Mike and Pat are the ones who go out and put the signs together and put them up. But we do the signs still. That part of that program we didn't want to let go because it's so important for safety personnel to find a okay, We told the lady to call back and because you're all of the uh, media. Okay, today. yeah. So that's what that is. It's okay. five, the cost is $5 yeah. and it pays mm -hmm. for the post and the sign. But Pat and Mike have been going out um, for years doing this for us, and also Bill Waslick used to help do it as well. So that, that's what that is. Absolutely. But we still call them triad house numbering signs. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. good. Okay. Right. I wasn't sure if it was handy, a handy man or not. I wasn't sure of the yeah. time. So I told her to call back. Yeah, good. Well, Somebody will. You did good. 
I am good at referral. <laughs> I always have the answers, but I know who to call to have it that has the answers. That's part of the service. Okay, uh, any questions on the handyman position? Anything in the other? I, I just was going to mention um, that we are still looking for a fitness center assistant, mm -hmm. and I received 14 applications from HR because the applications go through them. And um, of the 14, one may have qualifications. <laughs> Nobody else has anything at all to do with fitness at all. So there are two others who provided me with their resume, but they have not filled out an official city of Northampton job application. So I, I hope that we get somebody who is able to be in there. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be the afternoon person. And that's um, for up to 10 hours. The morning is up to 10 hours. So. Mm -hmm. On to a new business, the Mayor's Forum, December 23rd, 2015. I may have mentioned this at the last meeting. Um, WHMP is going to be doing the Bill Newman broadcast. I don't know if any of you listen to WHMP. But Bill Newman does a show, and the show in December is going to be former and current mayor talking about a number of, you know, uh, I guess there's going to be like a series of questions, and you know, it's just like a wealth of who did what when they were in office, um, and so that's on the 23rd. I am not exactly sure what time it starts. It might be eight o'clock, but, but they, you know, it'll get publicized for. Um, and it will be here, and you're all invited. Anybody's invited to attend, is what I was told. Um, so it will be here in the great room, um, and you get a chance to hear from Mayor Narkowitz, um, former Mayor uh, Mary Ford, former Mayor Claire Higgins. Um, I believe um, Dave Uzanti will be here, and oh. Harry Chapman. I'm sure in the paper will tell you exactly who's going to be here, but that's that's what I heard, and I hope it's all true. Harry Chapman. Okay, uh, 2016 programming calendar. So I'm working on that, uh, well, all the special events and the big programs that we do where we need to really make sure we have our own space for our own use before I start booking all the um, other outside groups that want to come in um, to use it. The uh, chorus, of course, will be here. They're here every Tuesday uh, during their uh, practice season. Um, and just to mention a couple things that I will be starting. Um, we're going to have, um, I think it's going to be Tuesday afternoons from quarter of three to quarter of four, a, um, a weekly tea. We're similar to the cup of conversation, but it's going to be in the afternoon. It's billed as, you know, a, a tea. I'll come up with some kind of name for it, um, where people can have tea and cookies or whatever and socialize and just to get together. IT. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be the same group of coffee and conversations. I hope, and I, well, I hope, and I hope more people come, but we're gonna, you know, it, it's, you know, hopefully it's just a come talk and relax and, and you social, know, social hour. Exactly. Well, we had we had eight, I think, at the last couple of conversations. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Tuesday, we had Is that three. Good? Two, pardon? Is that good? Yeah, we had yeah. eight people there, and four people stopped in, and we'll be coming in the next couple weeks. They said. Yeah, that's good. So. Yeah, it is. It's a nice time for people just to sit and talk, and you don't have to get all riled up about anything. We have a lot of fun. We yeah. we really like. And the conversation ranges all over the place. Wherever you want, somebody to go. starts, and it just it just goes. Can yeah. I go? Yes. Yeah. Ma'am, maybe not. You'll be <laughs> all <shaped up>. <laughs> <laughs> They don't fight it. No. No. <laughs> but, no. Shucks. Well, we did. We did recipes for coffee cake this last time, and we did. Oh. <laughs> we had recipes, and we talked about deer hunting, and we talked about kids doing this and that, and who died that week, and <laughs> where they lived, and the old stores and things. And it, it went round and round and round. It's it's a ball. Well, we, well, we do a planning trip to Argentina. Yeah, for a couple of the members. Yeah. So you know, that's, uh, 
it's a no pressure event. Yeah, Just no come idea. in. This is what Tuesday. Yeah. Be yourself. Um, and the other thing is um, starting a free Tai Chi class that would be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from quarter of three to quarter of four. So Tai Chi is one of the best forms of exercise and awakening that a person can have. So we're going to try that. And balance, yeah. There's a lot of um, positive outcomes. It's very important. Tai Chi. Exactly. That's our question. Okay, uh, so the calendar, any questions on the calendar? Or? Can I make a, uh, this is one of the things that's going great, is if you go around to the authors in the city now, the, the author of the month program here at Council on Aging is being talked about a lot, yeah. a tremendous lot. And it, I think it's one of the best marketing things that Heather mm -hmm. came up with, yeah. and it's really working well. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. And Jim, Jim is our January artist and author. Yeah. Uh -huh. I love that. Son of a gun, can we have your autograph? People pay for it. <laughs> but I'm and not that's the pay. truth. People pay for my autograph. That's kind of a neat thing. But anyway, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's going big. And uh, I'm going to make dead. a presentation <laughs> to the board and to you here probably in the next couple months about I'd like to have a, a day late fall where authors come here and people could pay five bucks they had to come through the door mm -hmm. and meet with the authors and i've mentioned that and i've got about 35 authors interested in doing that because they could sell their own books mm -hmm. and if we pick up five bucks ahead you know there'd be 500 to a thousand dollars i would estimate somewhere in that area nice. and it's not much work And you're going to be in charge of it anyway, <laughs> yes, so you're going to do all the work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would do that. Not our girl, first of all. You're out there to bring his own books. Yeah. 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 But it was it was been well received by all the other authors. They thought that was a great idea. Because of, because of the fact it's being so well received when an author comes, they talk about it at the meetings that we go to. I mean, there was 18 people. And the three that I've been to is not always the same people. Which is kind of interesting. Yeah, it brings in different people. Different, yeah. One poet brings in, one prose people bring really, in, you know, mystery. Yeah, my book group every once in a while we get authors, and I really like it. It really enhances the. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very really good, Jeff. We'll go with that. Okay, anything else on the programming? Okay, let's uh, move on to the annual appeal. So the annual appeal envelope will go out with the um, city census, which could be um, February, March. Um, I'm just trying to think the presidential primary is in March so you know whenever the city clerk gets in the registrar's get that out our envelope will be in there and that's one of our um, large fundraising events so the only part that we pay for is paying for the printing of the envelopes anything else on the annual appeal let's uh, move on to silent auction um, something that I thought would be a great fundraiser here has been a silent auction and um, you know, it's been talked about for a couple of years and we also already have a, a several items two of which are in the hallway um, that can be used for silent auction um, so I'm looking for someone or a couple of people to coordinate the silent auction um, having a silent auction isn't a new concept we did this before, didn't we? I made a cheesecake or something for you through you, right? It was. Well, I know we did a huge raffle thing that Jennifer Higgins was here. Yes, we did. Uh, not a raffle, I should say, drive. We were like, she got hundreds of prizes. I still have the TV. That you just bought a ticket for, and then you ended up getting something on this massive list. I mean, she did an excellent job with getting that all together. That might be what it was. Maybe that was so. So anyway. Got things from various merchants. In fact, I still have a TV from that's right, Faces. That TV. Yeah. The Susie one. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking for someone or persons to coordinate that. And doesn't mean it's someone sitting here, but I know you all have friends and relatives and people <laughs> and neighbors that you would love to get involved. So. For being experienced yeah. So I, I was thinking it could be like in late spring. Okay, 
Okay, anything else on the silent auction? Anything for others? Yes. I uh, have a suggestion. Okay. And this, I'm just throwing this out on the table because it just came to me when I saw the word calendar. We should do a calendar for 2017. And, eat, and Jim's photo, you know, photography group oh. could take the pictures. People down the street, Joanne said, we could probably work with them for a, you know, pretty good price. Don't cost, don't, it shouldn't be too much because you can get them free in the mail, but, you know, a good fundraiser. Uh -huh. It's just a thought. So, um, who do you want to work on your committee? <laughs> well, Jim, of course, because he's going to be taking the pictures. Okay. So, so we could put you like a, in charge of that, Barbara. Well, I could try. Okay, because it reminds me of when we did the cookbook. Yeah. You know, brought in a lot of people and you know different um, recipes, and then Paradise did the cookbook for us. Um, you know, there's a lot of work in between, but um, you know, if you want to be the person, we could kind of coordinate it. And, um, I'll try. But that, that's a great idea with people that we already have who have been you know, part you of might, our program. You might be able to look at a different kind of calendar in a way because you know we always get these wall kinds. But um, one time um, my friend had gotten one where it was almost a perpetual calendar where you did have a picture but you only had like 12 a month and 30 days and, and one year. But it was like you could just flip it and use whatever picture you wanted and stuff. I, Try to get a copy of you because you, it's it's perpetual. Mm -hmm. You can always use it. It's a nice little mm -hmm. up this big. Kind of then we could sell it to thousands. Well, you can get different things. Well, you think it's a yes. yeah, no, so, but I like well, I like every the idea because you want I want to write things on it. You know. Right. So Barbara, you're thinking 2017. 2017, but you got to start taking the pictures <clears throat> next year because in January you, you don't take have to start it. Taking pictures. Pictures. Hmm? We already, already have, have museum quality pictures being taken as we speak. We have already have we already have a date for the show in Forbes, and we are in the final running for the group for the Boston Art Museum. Oh, wow. But I'm talking, you know, projects here. Yeah, these are projects in from the, here. Oh. In the, in the center. Here. Oh, in the senior in, center. In oh. the senior center, oh. you know, oh. like oh, okay. You know, yeah, like I Tuesday you've got the quilting group. You have other things. Yeah. Something like that, and you know, in the summer you have your senior picnic, have a picture of that. You know, if people see their picture there, they're going to buy the calendar. Yeah. And the holiday dinners and the right. craft fairs and all of these exactly. things being featured. Uh, exactly. We need to have some fairly good sized thing featured most months, and we can also slip in the other programs in between. Yeah. Yeah. And on the side, if if you wanted to make you know what's going on this particular month or. It's similar to this, but not like yeah, this. Yeah, we designed yeah. differently. Yeah. Just a small highlight of the major uh, mm -hmm. events. Yeah, I would just be more worried about your market, who would buy them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it, if you if you had it with just photos of senior center participants and senior center special events, I feel like it would limit to those people who would be interested in buying it, to those people who are either in the calendar or those people who know people who are in the calendar and their families, whereas if it was art, there might it might broaden the, the market as to who would possibly buy the calendar. Just because. Maybe do it every other month. Well, yeah, well, we, 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 yeah, we, we, could we, could actually, we could actually do a big picture at the top with the art picture and then a smaller picture in the left or right hand corner of something that happened that month during the year before. Maybe we split both ways that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Usually yeah. have a corner somewhere. Yeah, in the usually, usually, yeah. The usually the lower right hand corner is for advertising. Yeah, yeah. we could work that out. We'll, we'll work on something. Yeah. We have like this dynamic duo and yeah, right. doing it. So. Well, thank you, Barbara, for. <laughs> well, it was your thought. You know, I think it's a good thought. work on it. And we'll uh, uh, break the talk. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's. Are oh, there anything else uh, somebody wants to bring up? Well, I don't know if it, um, I didn't bring my notes for Highland Valley, but mm -hmm. it's turning out to be. It's interesting in how the the um, it's changed in terms of. It's very much like a very business um, board right now. Yeah. And they're trying to get people who have skills, like business skills, like lawyers or business people, and they're really looking into fundraising much more and trying to. Um, 
And if you're a member, you, you must, if you're uh, on the advisory board, you must be a member of one of the committees. Mm -hmm. So that's more work and stuff, mm -hmm. it's fine. But, um, so they're really, I mean, it's, it's the demeanor of the, of the whole committee is different. So. Have they cut the number of people down? Yeah, um, who's on the board? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In fact, Northampton, right now, they're not doing by population, doing by one, one per each, each um, uh, city. So we don't have two openings no. anymore. No. So everybody has one. one. Correct. So that actually got changed in the bylaws. So, so nobody could come. Um, yeah. So how did they decide if a community had more than one, who was going to stay? Well, uh, Northampton is pretty easy to the only one there. But I think the only other place is Westfield, and they're becoming, you know, as soon as they just resign or they become members at large. Mm -hmm. How many members at large are there? I don't, I don't know. The top of how do you get to be a member at large? You can apply. Okay. And speaking of Westfield, on Sunday they have their grand opening of their new mm -hmm. senior center. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. But we'll all be up there. Yeah. 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 And after the holiday dinner, there's a concert at the high school. Yeah, mm -hmm. at 2 o'clock for the Florence Community Band. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you can go to the Pioneer Valley Ballet. Mm -hmm. Or a busy uh, day. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. 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 And uh, just because sale, January 7th, 8th, and 9th, from 9 a.m. to 12. Actually, so, it's actually till 1 o'clock. So we're changing that to 1 o'clock. Correction noted. Volunteers needed for that in January. And of course, the note at the bottom, if you're not able to attend, please call and go in. Mm -hmm. Let us know. We're trying to keep our participation up for the members here, and we're doing much better. So what's the deal on three strikes in your row? It's still there if we want to. In fact, Walter Bach has, uh, is not going to be reappointed. And uh, we've had two others who have left, but we've got two that are being approved. Uh, Trisha Healy has left, Diane Soler has left. Actually, Alexis uh, is not on either, so there's three that are actually gone. And Walter will be gone. And, but we have two, I understand two before the city yep. council now, they've been read once. <coughs> So they should be um, probably in January. So thank you for your participation. We appreciate your being here. Please be informed so we can vote. Make a motion to vote. And I think that motion would be uh, very good. All those in favor uh, say aye. Aye. All those opposed to leaving? Nobody gives us it. Meeting is closed. Now, of course, she's at home. I'm thankfully boxing, I hope.